after Icebox, after Breeze, after Fracture, we wanted to build something a little more straightforward, a little more approachable for players. Um, all of those maps are fairly strategically complex. We knew we wanted to revisit Old World Europe, and Portugal was a country that has a ton of rich culture. Somebody threw out the idea of what if it was ocean floors risen. They wanted to protect a part of the city, and therefore they built this big dome. This is our very first foray into Omega Earth. This was really our first opportunity to get to show that off to players. What are some of those defining differences? Pearl is one of its kind in that way. Players and even internally, we've come to sort of associate maps with like, well, what's the new hook? What's the thing that this map is going to do? And we wanted to make sure that we weren't sort of pigeonholing ourselves into that, making that a requirement for a map. Every new map needs to have a new mechanic. So we wanted to have something that was just purely geo-driven. This map was also in response to, you know, player needs, player desires. They were asking for something a little more straightforward, a little simpler. The initial pitch was traditional three-lane map, mid is smaller attackers are descending into defender territory. We had to do some tuning with you know, how much height is okay and uh, make sure that it didn't feel too overwhelming for defenders. But it also introduced some interesting situations for certain utility. So Raze loves to satchel boost off height deltas. Sage has a little bit of a harder time walling off A, but then she's one of the few people that can kind of cover the whole choke on B long. The other piece of that is mid is a little bit more short range. So maybe you can actually go there on a save round, but then you still have kind of a long fight into the sites themselves. Our story really began all the way back with the map Ascent. We haven't really spelled it out uh, up until this point. So this is really us finally saying, yes, we have two realities, Alpha Earth and Omega Earth, in conflict with each other. And Pearl is that opportunity for players to experience Omega for the very first time. Omega has a unique visual language, and developing that visual language and baking it into the DNA of this map was something that the whole team collaborated on and took part in. Here we are on Earth 2 for the first time, and with Earth 2 comes Kingdom 2. Here on K2, we wanted to keep that thematic of Kingdom with the metals and the concrete. However, we visually wanted the shape language to look and feel different. So when myself and some of the concept artists were looking at Kingdom 2, we wanted to create a type of architecture that was somewhat based in reality, right? You look at the architecture of like Zaha Hadid or Norman Foster or a number of other architects that are doing both parametric styles or organic types of architecture. And we saw that and wanted to weave that into the K2 narrative because if you look at K1, so much of it is just your typical modern architecture that we see, you know, out in the day to day. It was a lot of work but I think we came up with something good. So underwater, the deeper you go, the darker it gets. Also fun fact, the deeper you go underwater, color actually starts to really play a whole new role. It starts changing saturation levels, the values, everything starts getting tweaked out. So for this was a challenge. We had to really start cranking up all the artificial lighting, essentially all the wall sconces that we were able to place throughout the map. But at the end of the day, you know, if we needed to crank up the sun or something like that, we can say, hey, the water level is very close to the top of this dome. Therefore, there is some actual sunlight peeking through and we can play with that space to really help lift the light if we needed to. We worked with some actual mural artists from Lisbon, Portugal, and uh, had them give their spin and their flavor of their specific art that they do and interject it in our map. There's some challenges there because obviously they're painting on walls and popping that saturation, doing their thing. We have to really clamp our values specifically for gameplay so that a character is always going to read no matter what wall surface is behind them. The mural artists were, were fantastic people and they were so cool to work with. Conversations have to start really early in order to pull off cinematics like Shattered that are so integrated into the setting of Pearl. We want you to be able to immediately jump into game and see those exact same pieces of architecture, the exact same symbols, understand what you just saw in this cinematic expression of the world is what players get to live and breathe and experience in that competitive game environment. 
So there's a couple different areas around Pearl's map that I think really stand out as those lore integrated spaces. The comic book shop is one of them, High Tide Comics. Looking in the window and giving a glimpse into Omega Earth, it's very different than the Valorant Protocol and how they operate. There is the Multiverse Museum with various displays that show a peek into the history of Omega Earth's relationship with Radionite and other dimensions. High up above on certain walls, you'll see depictions of our agents. Those are absolute depictions that we hope help kind of fill in the gaps of how Omega's society interacts with Valorant in this world. As a player jumping into Pearl for the first time or 10th time, hopefully it feels comfortable. Like putting on an old, well-worn pair of shoes, this map should just be like, it clicks. You get it. Hopefully the map is delivering on that. As you enter into this battle and suddenly find yourself underneath this giant underwater dome in a city that is completely unlike so many of the other environments, I just hope the beauty captured in Pearl is something that players enjoy. Thank you.